Hello, and in this video, we're going to look at receiver architecture. And what we're going to do is take this block diagram that we've looked at already, which is, is a somewhat abstracted block diagram. And we're going to look at what actually goes on in a receiver to make this happen. Like, for example, let's just pick one example. We've shown a, the PRN code that exists at that point, and we discussed how it got there. And we generate a local copy of that PRN code, and we do an integration. Well, how, how does that actually happen? There's, how do these things get aligned and multiplied? And what does that look like algebraically? So we're going to do that in this section and, and look at the whole receiver. And instead of being something abstract, like this picture, we're going to see how this picture can be replaced with a complete algebraic description that looks like this. And, and I love this section of the class because in a few minutes, you're going, to, you're going to learn to generate all these equations that are on the screen right now. And, and at first glance, this looks, this looks really quite daunting. But it's something that, given the analysis we've just done in terms of the, the mixes and down converters, you're totally able to do. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's, let's begin with the signal at the satellite and put some algebraic variables onto this so we can, we can take it from there. So this is something we've looked at before. We, we have a sinusoid at the satellite uh, at the L1 frequency. So L1 frequency is 1575.42. That's one of the few things you absolutely must remember. So you have that. We, we have the CA code multiplying that signal. And let's call the CA code x of t. So it's some variable x. And then we have some data. And we call that d of t. And so we've, we've looked at this before. And what comes out is this binary phase shift keying keyed sinusoid was a sinusoid with a phase change every now and again, corresponding to the CA code or the data. And that signal travels down from the satellite. But, but now, what's different from the way we've looked at that before is we've assigned some variables. And so we can write down an equation for, for that sinusoid. And so let's, let's call it s for signal. So s of t is equal to some amplitude of it times this digital signal, d of t, which remember is just plus or minus 1, times the PR encode, x of t, which is also plus or minus 1, but changing at a different rate than the, than the data. And then times the sinusoid, cosine of the frequency, 2 pi, this L1 frequency we're calling FL times t. And so there is an algebraic description of what you're looking at. So it's fairly easily done. And that's the beginning of wh what follows. So now we're going to look at the front end of the receiver. We've, we've learned how to analyze the noise for this. Now we're going to look at how to analyze the signal passing through algebraically. So I'm, I'm just going to move the title out the way to give us some space. And let's begin by rewriting what we had at the satellite. So at the satellite, We have this signal, signal of t is equal to some amplitude times the data times the PRN code times cosine of 2 pi FL t. So that's what leaves the satellite. So, and then that signal travels down through space to our antenna. So what does it look like when it arrives at our antenna? Well. The amplitude is going to be different. Remember, we did the link budget. We saw that the power gets a lot less as the signal travels through space. So we're going to have some different amplitude. And we're going to say, let's say, call it root 2 of p. And if the amplitude of a sinusoid is root 2 of p, it means the power in that signal is p. So we say, given that we've got some power p, we don't know what it is. But uh, the amplitude of the signal must be root 2 p. And then we've still got this uh, data is still riding on the signal. So we've got d of t, but it's not d of t anymore because it took some time for the signal to get to us. So everything shifted by time tau. Tau is the time of flight, how long it took the signal to reach the receiver. And keep in mind, this is the exact value that we, we use in GPS. We, we look at how long does it take the signal to get to us. And that value tau is critical to everything we do. And so the same with x is there, x t minus tau. And, and then this cosine is there as well. And so it's 2 pi. Now, what frequency is it? It's 
of course the same frequency that was transmitted, but not exactly the same frequency because the satellite's moving and it induces a, a Doppler shift. And so the frequency that we observe when we when we look at this signal is going to be FL plus FD, and D is the Doppler shift, times time. And the phase is going to be different as well, because you get phase shifts as the signal travels through space. So would it, that's what the equation of the signal looks like when it arrives at us. So it's, it looks, if, if you, it looks fairly complicated equation, but it really is kind of simple. It's a cosine with, with some uh, amplitude terms in front and plus or minus terms, and then shifted by this time uh, tau, the time of flight, and with a slightly different frequency and phase. That's all that's happened. So uh, just to neaten things up, I'm going to clean that up and, and show you that same equation printed out nicely. And, and so that arrives at the antenna. And the, then the next thing we look at is we want to mix that down, just like we've just, we've just spoken about our mixes. And so now when you would design a receiver, you would you would multiply this by a signal that's going to mix it down to intermediate frequency. We want, we want it at an intermediate frequency, a lower frequency than 1.5 gigahertz, so we can sample uh, and digitally store the signal. So, what, so we have to multiply by something here. Well, you saw uh, from the previous video that, uh, that you generate a signal with amplitude root 2, and that takes care of the root 2 up there. Uh, and we want to try to generate a similar frequency to the frequency that we're receiving, but offset by this intermediate frequency. So we would generate a signal of cosine 2 pi times the incoming frequency, FL. So remember, FL is like 1.5 gigahertz, and the Doppler frequency is much less. We'll see exactly how much less later. But so we generate this offset by just with FL offset by the intermediate frequency, which we're calling IF1 on, on this slide, and multiplied by T. And we are going to have some phase that this clock is at. We don't know exactly what it is, but it's going to have some value. And so that's the, the signal that we generate. And then it goes th through a multiplier. And so we'll just get this multiplied by that. So that that's going to be root 2 times root 2 times p, but times the gain of all the, of the amplifier in here. So, so it's, it's not just going to be 2p. It's, it's going to be some other amplitude, which we'll call root c, where c is the, the, the power of the signal at this stage, which is going to be a function of how much amplification we had in that low noise amplifier. So we, that's why the p becomes a c. And then we'd have the digital terms, t minus tau, for the data, x of t minus tau for the PRN code. And then this would be, after multiplying, we've seen that you get cosine of the difference. Plus cosine of the sum of the two frequencies that are that are coming in the frequency from space and the frequency that we've generated. And so then when we have a band, so the the difference of these is going to be FL plus FD minus FL minus minus FIF. So you're going to get a term that's got the intermediate frequency in it offset by the Doppler, which is typically fairly small compared to uh, the the L1 frequency. And then be because it's a band pass filter centered at this intermediate frequency, the sum of these are going to be a very high frequency term indeed. We've got L1, 1 1.5 gigahertz, plus another L1. And so this band pass filter will filter out the cosine of the sum. So this will disappear. And then down here, we would expect to have root C times the data times the PRN code, times cosine of the difference. And so now if we take that away and, and then look at the actual formulas and, and then just think about what we just said, you'll, you'll see this very same formula that I just wrote out. And then the sum, this is the 
the difference term, FL plus FD minus FL minus minus FIF, you just ended up with that. That's the difference term. And then there's the sum term. And the important part is the 2FL. And that's what gets filtered out by the bandpass filter. So this term disappears. And what we're left with is this signal where it's centered at this IF and an offset by whatever the Doppler is. And so that's the signal coming out of the intermediate frequency stage of the receiver, which we, we saw in our block diagrams, but now we understand algebraically how it comes about. So that's the first step. And, and so the, on, the, on the top line here, I've just rewritten what we just had. Right? We had the data, the PRN code, and then this cosine, the intermediate frequency plus the Doppler. So that's what's coming out of our front end. And the, the next thing we, we do is we want to mix that signal down to baseband or to where we've got the, something close to the PRN code with the intermediate frequency removed so that we can do our correlation on the PRN code. So, so here we have some empty boxes, and we'll, we'll fill these in just like we did before. So, so we have the signal coming in, and we, what you're seeing here is the in-phase and quadrature samples that we talked about in the previous video. So for in-phase, we want to generate a sinusoid that, that tries to match the sinusoid coming in. So it, we'd have two cosine. The reason for the two, remember, we had root two, root two before, because when you look at those identities, when you you end up with a 2 because you add the cosine a plus b, cosine a minus b. So, so we, we, we are in the receiver design, we generate a signal with cosine of 2 pi times. Now, we're trying to match this FIF plus the Doppler frequency. Well, IF is, we know what that is, because that's by design of the receiver. We just generated the IF signal on the previous slide ourselves inside the receiver. And so we know what it is. So we can generate the exact same frequency here. And we're going to generate a Doppler frequency, but we don't know exactly what the, what the Doppler frequency of the received signal is, because we haven't received it yet. We're, we're still trying to find it. So we generate, we put an estimate, FD hat, of the Doppler frequency times t. And then we don't know what the phase is either, so we have some estimate of the phase theta hat. And so that's what we would put in here. And then the in-phase samples of that, we would after the low pass filter we just have uh, this root c from here times the data part t minus tau times the prn code t minus tau times cosine of the difference of these two terms because remember the low pass filter filters out the the sum terms so we'll have cosine of and then the difference, the intermediate frequency terms disappear, and so we just get the actual Doppler frequency minus the estimated Doppler frequency, and then plus some delta theta for the difference in the in the phase terms, and there's a t over there, and so that's what the in phase part looks like, and then for the, and so this, this looks very much like what we talked about when we talked about mixers and down converters, that we, we want to get to a stage where we try to estimate the frequency, the receive frequency, and that's what we're doing here. And if we do it exactly right, then we, this cosine is just going to be cosine of 0, and we're going to be left with our PRN code here and the data that we can do a correlation on. So, and then just remember that we talked about what if the frequencies are not exactly right, which they in invariably aren't when you begin, because we don't know exactly the received frequency. Then this FD minus FD hat will not be 0. And, and that's why we generate this quadrature term. And so you remember the quadrature term, we had minus 2 sine. And then we just put the same thing in here uh, that we have there. And, and what we would expect to come out here is the same thing as in phase, but shifted by 90 degrees. So that looks like this, t minus tau, x of t minus tau, sine of ditto of the same thing that's in there. And so uh, if I clean that up, 
and put the printed terms, you'll, you'll now see where these things come from. We, we have this incoming frequency at IF frequency plus a Doppler offset. So we generate the in-phase signal that tries to match it exactly where we got the estimate of the Doppler trying to match the actual Doppler. And then after the low pass filter, we left with our data, our PRN code, and the difference between the actual and the estimated Doppler. And then on the, on the quadrature part, it's exactly the same, except it's sine where this is cosine. And that's going to be useful to us later. So that's the digital part of the receiver. And now we can move on to the correlators. And remember, we've looked at correlators only really in the abstract before is this sequence of, of numbers plus or minus one, and we want to multiply by the a replica of that sequence. So algebraically, what does that look like? Well, we begin with this in phase here and the quadrature here, and let's begin the next page with that. So now we've taken the result of the mixes at intermediate frequency, and we've we just put them on the top left here, the in phase signal and the quadrature signal. And now we're going to focus on the PRN code and do the operation of correlation. And so what that looks like in the receiver is that you've got the signal x of t minus tau, where there's some unknown delay tau. And we generate our own copy of it, x of t minus some estimate of the delay. Now, the, the actual sequence of x we know. That's the PRN code that's published in the interface specification. We multiply these together, and we sum up the result or integrate the result. So what's inside this box is the integral from 0 to some time that we call TCO for coherent integration time. Why it's called coherent integration time will become clear later. But it's in summary, it's because we try to have this signal coherently changing with the incoming signal. And so we integrate the input with respect to time. And we normalize by the integration time. And the output of this, which we will denote uh, the sum for the in phase part of the signal is equal to this root c, the amplitude coming in. And we'll assume for now that we're integrating only over one millisecond. Now remember that the, the data part of the code changes only every 20 milliseconds, and the PRN code repeats every millisecond. So, so for the moment, just assume we're integrating for one millisecond. Then this data part doesn't change over that one millisecond. And so the d is just always the same value, either plus 1 or minus 1, but it doesn't change over time. So we can just write it as a constant, divide by this normalization value. And then we've got the integral from 0 to tco of the incoming PRN code, x of t minus tau, times our locally generated copy from down here, x of t minus tau hat times the cosine term that that came in this term here cosine 2 pi delta f doppler plus and that's times time plus delta phase so that's the output of the correlator for the in phase correlator and there's going to be a similar one for the quadrature cor correlator, but instead of cosine, it's going to look like sine. So, so instead of writing that all out, I'll, I'll clean, up the, uh, clean up the writing and just show it to you. So there's the in integration. There's the, the output of the correlator. And then on the bottom, there's the integration there, and there's the output of the correlator. And the, the important thing to notice, which we will make use of later, is that if we don't have this Doppler term exactly right, so this delta FD is not 0, which, as I mentioned, is, is always the case. We, we have a slowly varying sinus. We've got a multiply of these two PRN codes, which match each other, but for this offset. And slowly varying frequency, but we've got a different slowly varying frequency down here, 90 degrees offset from, from the top term. And we can, we can make use of this in-phase and quadrature to, to recover this signal later. So we're going to do that. We're going to look at that and how we manipulate the in-phase and quadrature in Module 5. But for now, I just want you to notice what the signal is a function of. 
and it's a function of two unknowns. The delta, the tau hat, what is the offset that we're generating to try and match the actual offset of the signal. And this delta fd, which remember was the input Doppler minus our estimate of the Doppler fd hat. So there's two things we're playing with, the frequency offset and the what we call the code delay. This is the PRN code x and the delay in it, this tau. And when we've got those two things right, then we'll get a peak out of our correlator. And that's what we're going to look at uh, in the next video. Uh, but for now, we've done the algebra and so of that part, and we've reached the output of the correlator. So now if we fit that slide that I just showed you with the previous slide where we uh, took the IF signal and mixed it into in phase and quadrature, we, we get that slide. Uh, which you remember in a few, you know, just a few minutes ago looked very complicated, but you've been through every equation now. And so now what I want to do is, is add in the front end again. So that is what we began with, all of the, the different pieces of the receiver. And I want to show you how that compares with the more abstracted diagram that we began with. So uh, that abstracted diagram only showed you the in-phase part. So let's Let's black out the quadrature part, which is, remember, is just like the in-phase part shifted by 90 degrees. And then we'll bring in the abstracted diagram. And now you can see the point of all this, where everything on the top, where we've looked at the algebra, now we have a one-for-one -one match with this more conceptual block diagram at the bottom. So we've, we've got the front end that generates the intermediate frequency. Well, we saw how that happens here. We have this mixer and the band pass filter at the intermediate frequency. We have this mixer here and a low pass filter that generates the PRN code. Well, that, that was here. You had this, the mixer there, the low pass filter, and you saw how the PRN code came out there. And then we have this correlator, this very important term correlate. How does that actually happen? Well, it's this term generated here, multiplied by what comes out of here, integrated there. And if we get everything right, we'll get our correlation peak. And the last thing to remember is what is it we need to get right to get that correlation peak? Two things have to be set right. The tau hat, the, the code delay, and the frequency offset, this FD hat there. And so that's going to be really important in the next video.